Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another Supercoach Insider podcast. My name is Swizz, here with my Round 5 AFL Supercoach team discussion. Before I jump into that, as always, check us out on all our social media platforms, in particular YouTube, Spotify, and get in contact with us via Twitter, Supercoach Insider 100, or Swizz26 for me directly. All right, 22.35 for me, which unfortunately dropped me down another 1,700 spots, back down to 13,000. Not the greatest in the world, but, you know, there was a couple of reasons for that. Was flying come Saturday afternoon. Uh, ended up going vice-captain Butters, but didn't take it and took the risk with Heaney. Heaney was always my guy that I wanted a vice-captain, but because of a couple of the trades I made, um, meant I didn't have a loophole option later in the round, but backed him in due to the... Uh, closeness of the game to a half time between Sydney and West Coast. Um, Heaney getting a couple of goals and then his impact did boost him massively. So I was pretty happy with that. Uh, the disappointing part was I traded out Sexton instead of Berry. And because of that, um, couldn't get Darcy's score on. And then it meant I didn't have enough cash. Uh, so I ended up going Draper instead of Brown. Thought their output would be fairly similar. As we saw, there was about an 80 point difference in that. Um, so that was really frustrating. So I think all up that trade of going Sexton instead of trading Barry cost me 117 points, and that would have been a massive difference. Obviously, you know, if I'd scored 23, a 52 um, would have moved up inside easily inside that top 5,000. But you know, that's the way it goes. It always seems to be also that my draft and my tipping goes a lot better um, than my super coach, or it's the other way around. So not our nine for the tips. My draft teams were pretty good this week, but unfortunately the classic didn't pan out the way I wanted, but still nonetheless didn't lose too much ground. Um, and, you know, the couple of the trades I did make in particular, as much as losing Harley Reid was frustrating um, to watch him go so well, even playing as a forward, you know, keeping five, you know, getting that 102 as well as um, having uh, Flanders come in my team and making you know, scoring 125 and playing in that half-back role um, yeah, was very appealing as well. So I'm pretty happy overall how my team's sitting. There is a world where I could definitely look at it and go, yeah, I don't need to make a trade this week. Um, like if I put Howes on there for Reed, um, so everyone by Dacos is playing in my back line, so I'm happy to play Techly one short there. Um, there's plenty of loophole options too, depending on who, how you've got your team. So with, um, you know, Roberts not playing in my midfield, um, like I could definitely have Sanders there. Um, and then I could potentially go a uh, emergency on, say, a Wilson. Um, and then depending on how, um, say, a uh, Wilson goes, I can always bench McCurcher playing on the uh, Sunday against Geelong, for example. Um, with no Grundy, very easy. I can just then put Livingston into the forward line and then loophole here. Go, uh, just uh, I'll make the swap here and put Grundy on the bench. And then I could very much have, actually, no, I don't want Grundy on the bench. I'll have Jackson on the bench, set that up for my captaincy, put the vice captain on Gorn, for example. And then finally in my um, forward line, Barry could technically come on field. And then Darcy could come into the um, onto the forward line as well. And then let's just put the captain on my boy Tom Green. So um, got the loophole set up. Jackson there. That would give me 21 players this week. Best 18. And I'd be pretty happy with that. So as I said, I don't need to trade. But saying that, definitely going to be trading this week. Because why not? It's just more the question of how many trades do I really do want to use there's plenty of options. Obviously, I don't have a couple of issues like a few people, um, in particular JJ. Um, there are some really good rookies, um, not necessarily on the bubble this week, but will be the following week. There's a couple of other guys that have reset their cash. So I'll just talk about each sort of position and where I'm thinking. So the back line, I know a lot of people are looking at Massimo D'Ambrosio as a trade-out option. Um, I don't think that's a, you know, a must. The only problem is if he, for whatever reason, was to get dropped this week because he you know, did spend a lot of time in the bench in the last quarter. Break even of 49. Um, that's very attainable. Gold Coast and North Melbourne coming up. You know, he hasn't had a score below that. Um, you know, and if he was to have another high score, he could definitely restart that cash generation. So I don't think he's going anywhere unless, of course, he was, to, for, as I said, to be dropped. 
So, yeah, no problems there. Zachy Williams, that was good for that 81 that we got. It looks like he's escaped injury. So, break even of seven. So, again, that resets that uh, cash gen for us. Um, and probably looking at making about 50K over the next couple of weeks, though they do have their uh, very low projected score for him against the Giants. So it could even be higher than that. We might be looking at 60 or 70K. So as much as the back line is a bit of a problem for me, best 18 in the next two weeks, I'm not that worried. The Draper one's a bit frustrating because it could have very easily been Brown if I'd gone that way. And it's just so frustrating that Sexton was the one drop because Barry was the one going out of my side. But, you know, that's the way it is. Draper still has a break even of minus four. Should still have some decent job security. The problem is it's just that key defender um, post there. You know, Freer obviously men men down. It was a hard matchup for up against that Carlton forward line as it was always going to be. And, and did not see that Brown game coming at all. Like I watched him obviously live the week before. And, um, yeah, really did struggle in the first half. But with lost and having a down game, yeah, Brown was the one to get a lot of link up. But, yeah, you, you know, if, if he was able to rebound with a 40, 50, 60 this week, you know, Draper can definitely reset um, that cash gen. So not the end of the world. We know Reed's going to be coming back. So the only one really in defense that I'm looking at in particular, like Dacos is there, got 102. He's dropped enough cash. It's just well done to those, I guess, who didn't start him. You're going to get him 83K cheaper. But in saying that, like he has averaged pretty well. It's just a question of who did you start instead of him. If you had a Ryan or a Houston, you know, one of those guys, you know, you, you are flying. So, yeah, pick it. you'll be picking him up for 566, break even of 110. You probably could wait one more week, but you're going to want him for Anzac Day. Um, but, yeah, I, I wouldn't be looking at kind of trading him out just because of this week with the buy. The break even's pretty um, attainable, and you're going to want him um, coming up with that fixture. Um, you know, especially Anzac Day in particular, I think you'll have a massive day there. He usually does. So it's, um, yeah, uh, if you if you got off him a couple of weeks ago, yeah, that's a different story. But this week, no. So there's, there's um, that. So the only one in the back line, really, that a lot of people will be looking at is Howes. Um, you know, the 46 last week was disappointing. Definitely has scored better at the G than the Adelaide Oval. Break even of 56, which he does have three scores above that with that 91 in opening round and 64 and 68. Back at the G for the next four weeks. Now, he does have the buy in between round five and seven. So most likely, most people will want to trade him um, after that, just to, uh, especially with a couple of these players on the, on the horizon. Uh, no issue with trading him early this week. Like, he's he's probably not going to hurt you too much. Like, they've got him as a projected score of 59. Goes up a couple K. The only problem is if he was able to get, like, another 90-odd. But his MCG scores have been 64 and 68. So you're probably looking at him maybe going up, you know, 6, 7K. The only issue is that 26 will then drop out against Richmond. And he could still make another. Um, they've got him there if he's going 63 weeks in a row. It's likely to be another 36k plus and then another 13. So you're looking at maybe another 50k that he could potentially make. Um, yeah, and that that like cash gen is obviously all important. So yeah, there's no reason to necessarily trade him out. However, the very popular trade at the moment is Blake Howes gets traded out for um, closely from the Gold Coast Suns. Um, now, if the Supercoach have confirmed if they play three games, they will get dual position. Charlie Combin's in that situation, so it's closely. So if he was to uh, play the next couple of weeks and get midfield wing time, um, he could become a defender midfielder. Um, so that wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, so, yes, yeah, scrolling, scrolling down there, you actually had Mac Andrew get 101 also for the Suns, but they're the 108, uh, 4% of team, but, yeah, he's... Most traded in with both the whole of Supercoach and the, um, the top 1% um, this week. So no surprise there. So I might do that for now. There's still a part of me that kind of likes to wait, but I just have a feeling next week there's going to be, you know, we've got Graham, we've got Combin. Um, there's going to be a potentially a lot of options that we're kind of looking at. So um, I think he might be the obvious and it does let me do another thing in my team with that remaining salary cap of 135. So I'll discuss that in a moment uh, so yeah that that's the defense still looks a little bit thin naturally because of D'Ambrosi and Williams um, not having Nick Martin I have looked at maybe Hayden Young um, both of them if you're going to probably get them this might be the week to do it 
um, still keen at some point. Well, you know, you got Ryan Stewart, Sicily, Sinclair. Um, so there is plenty of options in defence that I will probably be targeting at some point. And probably coming out of the buyers, I know I need at least one. Like in a perfect world of D'Ambrosio, I get another look at him. If him and Williams can keep trugging along, I really want another one and then just kind of have three defenders that I can move around. Um, the other part of it is, you know, Roberts will get dual position, so then he probably takes one of those spots too. I'll have the option of Buku Karmas as well to go back there, so um, it won't look as bad once we get the dual position players come round seven after all the first buys are done. Uh, midfield, Bont, Green, Butters, Sarong, Libba. I was talking to MJ about this before. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the big five. Um, like, oh, you want five main midfielders in there. Some people are going a little bit less on that, which is fine, which is allowing them to get, say, a, hypothetically a sharp on field like they did last week. So credit to those people who were able to do that. Um, but, yeah, you're kind of wanting five because of some of the cheap options we're going to be getting in soon. So um, Clayton Oliver looks like, you know, he's got a game against the Lions this week with a massive break-even. And if I'm... Excuse me, go and have a look at um, these players. So we've got Clary. Um, I know another one is uh, Dawson, who a few people started with, who um, I'd be recommending trying to hold because a lot of people are going to be looking at them. And the other one is um, LDU. So we've got some options there of these players who are going to drop some serious cash, um, who have done it in the past, and you know could be potential great options for us to upgrade to. Uh, so where are you, Clayton Oliver? There you are, 543. So he had the 62 last week, break even of 156. Now they're saying he's got no chance of getting that. We know he's done that easily before, but um, it's more than likely in current form that he's not going to do that. Uh, so we're looking at, they, they've got him projected 90. Even if it's 110, like he's, he's still going to drop 20K this week. If it's if it's a 90, well, he's going to drop 30K, get to 512, and then a poor score against Richmond, you know, he could drop to his five, five, nine, 490 um, more than likely if he was to, you know, rebound and get like you know, at least 100, maybe 100 and, 105, 110. Um, yeah, we, we still might be looking at Clayton and Oliver close to that 500 mark. Um, so he's definitely somebody that we'll be debating after his buy, what his break even is, and is it worth getting him for the Richmond game or is it worth holding one more week? But, you know, Richmond, Geelong, uh, you know, the games at the G, West Coast, um, yeah, and it's never really mattered for Clary, but um, you know we, we know when he's fully fit, and if he maybe they get a little mini preseason in him on the buy, or maybe they just get him to refresh. Either way, um, but at that sort of price around the five hundred mark, he's somebody I'll definitely want to own. Uh, so yeah, you've got to have him on your radar as a potential M C six um, to to join them. A couple of the other players in that mark, um, so will be uh, Dawson that we you know we know he's been dropping a lot of cash if you are an owner and it's a, probably one of the biggest questions I've had because I was keen on in preseason I'd keep holding but you've already dropped 90k um, the money doesn't mean anything if you don't trade him you know he he's had some moments where it looks like he's kicking the ball well like his stats are still great he's had 26 touches 26 touches 27 touches 23 touches and he's had 6 12 5 and 5 tackles um, only the one goal so far, but yeah, just been disposal efficiency. If he cleans that up, there's no reason why he can't return to the numbers that he had in 2023. Um, and you just have to look at that. Like he had the 97, but like a 173, 152, 150, there's some 149, some massive scores in there. So we know with the right fixture and just him, we're hitting targets. Um, he can return to that. So, um, yeah, it's disappointing if you, if you have owned him and he's dropping those sort of scores, but realistically you know everybody's got some disappointing players in there um at 556 you know still got a break even of 151 you know they're saying with a 97 probably drops 24k and then his break even kind of levels out um so he's definitely one that could be on the horizon the following week if he gets down to say 530 um even if he doesn't sort of go as low as that with a 97 he's still going to probably be quite you know between 530 and 540 um, and somebody we've got to consider Essendon, North Melbourne on the horizon. You know, we're going to have West Coast and Hawthorne coming into the buys. So it is a cheap option for us for a guy that, you know, can easily average 115. Um, and then the other one is LDU at 564 at the moment. Uh, dropped the 88 the other day. 
Um, but more importantly, his break even is 167. Again, something that he could potentially do, um, but more than likely because of that 67 and 88, um, you know, they're saying projected 112. If, he, if that would mean he'd drop 25k again and be back at that 538. So there's three options there um, for our teams that you know could potentially be M6, M7, and M8 for us, which are costing us under 550 or even as cheap as close to 500, um, which is not that much more expensive than like you know if you're looking at say McKercher for example, you know perfect world we'd like to hold him for longer. He's made 100k. You know he's still playing some great footy break even still very reasonable um you know 43 which yeah he, he hasn't gone under yet um you know super coach is saying a couple of 73s and makes another 20k for us that could just keep going up and up and up if he he does that you know that 54 could come out of his cycle um we know he's got the ability to you know score in the 80s but yeah a mccurcher at you know three maybe even say in a couple of weeks time at 330 um, you know, it's 170k to get him up to Oliver. That's like not too bad news. Even Roberts, who I'm very keen to um, hold and, and play my defence. Like you have a look at him, break even of 14. Um, and, you know, he's been smashing at 94, 98, 80 um, in recent times. You know, he's going to go up at least another probably 40, 50k for us. Or a, a Matty Roberts, for example. Um, if you own him or even a Jeremy Sharps, another one in this range, you know, if he gets to sort of 380, 400, it might only be 100, 110k to get him to a Clayton Oliver, might be a little bit more to get him to an LDU um, or, a, or a Dawson. But yeah, definitely a way myself and, and super coaches out there can fill up their team um, in regards to the midfield. Um, I've got Nathan Fife sitting there at the moment, so I'm sort of glad I did hold him. As I said, disappointed I didn't get to hold Reed, but it was one or the other. Break even of 26, another important game for them this week. So I expect, you know, maybe not 100, but as much of a much again from him. A little worried about the West Coast game because that's a game that he could potentially get subbed out early again. Um, I guess it depends if they're playing Darcy. Maybe he's the one that gets subbed out. So uh, we'll just sort of manage five week to week. But uh, for now, break even of 26 means... You know, he'll make some cash for us at 77. Uh, that's very um, achievable from five. You know, that would get an extra 23K. You know, and, and realistically, players, you want a minimum of 100K out of people. So if five can do that, I'm really considering that he's really my F5 at the moment. Um, but he's just sitting there at the moment, which is handy. We're obviously, we're, um, we're like Roberts out as it is. And then we'll, we'll fix that up in a couple of weeks if I need to trade him out or if I just need to keep him at F5. Uh, the big one is Gorn, and then you've got Jackson and Grundy. I might tackle this at the very end because after I've talked about the forwards, because that's the one a lot of people are wanting to look at. Um, for um, forward line, you know Flanders, Powell, um, and then I've got Heaney, and then technically Jackson if I swap the Livingston. Um, so they're the main four forwards that we've got going this season. Um, there's uh, not a lot of other guys really putting their hand up as massive premiums. It's not like we're going to get players in a dual position. You only have to have a look at the, the sort of high averaging forward side. A lot of the questions is, what do I do with Hogan? What do I do with Mackay? And there's um, not really any other, like they're, they're actually top line forwards this year. So you could kind of actually hold on to them for now. Because if we go kind of by average, you've got Heaney. Let's take out Charlie Combin at the moment because obviously it's one game, 129. Somebody that we need to look at. Uh, played a bit like Glenn Jakovic last week with marking everything. But you get another week to probably look at him. But I don't think Toby Pink's taking his position anytime soon. But then you've got Jackson there, who's also giving ruck cover, Flanders. Um, and then you've got Harry Mackay, you know, averaging 113. Yeah, had the 75 last week, but is one of the best forwards still. Hogan, you know, only the 86, um, but still averaging 107. So he's up there as one of the best. Zorko, we know his age is the problem, but still averaging really well. Max King. Um, averaging 100, he's the, well, let's call him the seventh, let's just take Compton out. He's got a really tasty fixture coming up. We talked about the Richmond game, probably didn't suit him early on, but definitely came into it in the second half. But, you know, GDWS this week, but then, you know, Bulldogs, unfortunately, Port at Adelaide Oval, uh, North Melbourne, Hawthorne, he's got West Coast before he's by. Um, so there are some games where he could potentially fill his boots. And, you know, at 390 could definitely be an option up there as a one of the premium forwards because there's just there's not a lot um taylor adams is someone we might have to look at we'll see what he does after his buy 97 so he might come under this consideration there's shy bolton 
you know, Nat, Nat Fife at the moment is the 18th highest averaging forward. Um, and he's only, you know, f- what's that, four points behind Joe Danaher. There's a bit more of a gap as we head up into, like, Bolton, but it's not that far off the pace. Jeremy Cameron's um, there. I know a few people obviously have Dempsey. Um, another interesting one is Lacocious. Um Deserves a mention, only averaging 78 throughout the season, but somebody at 400, 400k um, did have the low game in round um, one against the Crows, but the conditions were absolutely awful there. Um, really hard to mark in those conditions, but he's got 93, 87, and 95 in other games. And, you know, we know about the Suns' draw, like Hawthorne, West Coast, North Melbourne coming up in the next few weeks. So the um, only problem is there's a couple games there, which, again, conditions might not suit him. But at 400k with that draw, you know, could he get on a, get on a bit of a run and spike? Um, so yeah, sort of the forward options at F um, F5 F6 aren't sort of like putting their hand up as massive um, options there. There you can even see like um, Darcy, you know, 82 at the moment at you know 25th overall. So um, I, I nearly kind of feel like you could just leave the forward line, have those sort of three or four top boys, Tom Powell's not far off the mix, and then. Yeah, if you've got a Makai or Hogan, you could easily just keep them at the moment. And um, yeah, like don't really need to make too many moves. Um, and maybe let's just see what eventuates in regards to the forward line. All right, the ruck line, however, that's a completely different story in itself. Now, the hard thing is if you don't have Max Gorn, Max Gorn does have the buy next week. So it does make it hard because you're bringing him in for one week and then you, um, unless you've got Jackson cover. Um, coverage you um yeah you can obviously miss him the following week the problem is with Gorney break even of 75 if he goes to the roof you know he, if he's not already unattainable at 666 um he could be uh you know getting close to that 700 mark we know what he did last time he got a 215 against the Lions um I don't expect the same but yeah he's gonna um you you'd hate to not have him and then he goes um that much he's only currently in 52.8 percent of teams which is interesting so yeah if he goes huge this week yeah they're, they're saying a well, 169 puts him at 710 um and then he's got the tigers after the buy you know um so i feel like if you don't have him maybe you've got to kind of look at other avenues to try to um you know um, what would I say? Um, yeah, try not to make the hurt so much. Um, but yeah, the the options are a little bit limited. But there are a couple that do put their hand up um, that we need need to focus on. So if you are considering trading out Grundy, and I don't mind the move, the break even's fine. Like it's a break even of eighty three. So that's that's not the problem there. So I made the twenty five k. It's shown that Cherry was probably a better start off anyway. Scores have been all right. Like the one thirty nine, unfortunately, didn't get. 71, but the last three weeks, 99, 114, 93, it's not too bad. It's just off the pace of the couple of the big rucks, which is the problem. You know, the the draw, it's up and down. You know, got the Suns, the Hawks, not too bad. And, you know, the Giants, again, Briggsy, who knows, he'll be rucking against at Fremantle. You know, they'll have English at some point, so it's like one good game, one bad game. But then, you know, will um, West Coast should have been the big game, and, yeah, not a lot happened there. So, um, yeah, there are some question marks. At his price, you know, does he have a little bit more in him? Like, yeah, okay, he's averaging 103. might be the case what Grundy does. He might have a few big games where he goes 140 and all the other games are sort of 90. Yeah, his overall average might stay at like 103, 105. But his, uh, his output on any given week might uh, not be great. But the pro- then the problem is you compare it to a couple of the other rucks that we have as options. And, yeah, even though they're more expensive, he is way off the pace of that so the, the there's probably three players that you could potentially trade him to um which seem to stand out more than everything anyone and definitely one of these players is on my consideration for this week um so i'll go through all three of them quickly and i don't know why that didn't um search as a um, as a ruck but let's have a look here there we go um, so by average, so we've got obviously Gorn going 130. So if you don't have him, maybe it's try to find a cash. But as I said, the problem is you're going to have a week with him out the buy. So the two guys that don't have a buy might be better op- option for you. Firstly, it's Timmy English, average of 124 at the moment, is still dropping a little bit cash. He's 690, break even of 154. Now he has gone over 200 against the Bombers before, so he could potentially go up. But he seems to just be doing his thing: 119, 138, 124, and 117. As I said, Bombers, he's got a high score of 204. Some, a bit of a mixture of a fixture, 
for him, so Bombers shouldn't trouble him too much. Saints at Mar Marvel against uh, Marshall will be interesting. Does have Freo, then has to travel, and then comes back. Hawthorne and Richmond are probably a couple of good matchups there. Um, but but for English, you know, he's probably the premier ruck. He could potentially drop a little bit more cash. You might have to pick him up for 650 if you could potentially hold on. I know a lot of people are looking at maybe it's even Jackson um, to um, Timmy English. Uh, the question about for English is what happens if, say, Jamara was left out or if they wanted to give Sam Darcy a rest and then um, Lobb comes in or if they even, you know, got up by a fair margin in one of these games. Let's just hypothetically say it is against either the Bombers or the Hawks or the Tigers. Um, we saw against West Coast, they were happy to sub Looper off. Um, let's just say against the Hawks, they get eight goals up at three quarter time. Do they go to Timmy English? You can have a rest, and you know Sam Darcy can um, sub out the, um, you know, ruck out the rest of the game. Now he might already be on 100, 110 by then anyway, so this being subbed out might not be affected. But at the same time, you know, it, it's got to be a little bit of food for thought. Um, but you know, he is one of the premier ruckmen in. So instead of sort of getting Gorn Owen just for next week. Um, and then oh, well, for this week and then him having a buy, Tim English with the extra week can definitely not only average more than Gorn, but you'll get that week where Gorn doesn't um, doesn't play only in 12% of size at the moment. So yeah, he is, is a pretty solid choice. Um, the one I really like for um, 86,000 cheaper is Rowan Marshall. Now, he's the same boat where there is always talk about Tom Campbell. Does he come in? Um, so it's something I'm waiting to see what happens with teams. If they were, for whatever reason, the name Campbell, then I might be worried. But they talked about that all last year and it just didn't happen. Didn't have the greatest game against the Bombers, but um, he was on fire against the Tigers at 147, 106 and 127. Also, in his scores, um, you know, he, as a sole ruck, he's absolutely f been flying you know, second half of last year was awesome. Uh, big game against Briggsy this week. Then he does have Timmy English, but back at Marvel, Soldo's probably not going to worry him too much. And then the North Melbourne Hawthorne games does have West Coast be, um, before the bye. Um, and you just have a look at sort of, uh, well, you know, his hitouts were a little bit down against Collingwood. Um, but the big thing against the Bombers was the five free kicks against. I think that was probably the, the big thing that, um, you know, helped get his score down. Um, so, you yeah, know, that one poor score in, uh, in every so often, like every ruck's going to do that at some point. Like you look at his 2023 20, form, um, and yeah, there was a, there was a couple lower scores to start off the year, as you can see the 96 and the 78, 88. Um, but definitely that, that second half, especially, uh, you know, unfortunately, like you, that was, that, that 58 was a game we got subbed out. Um, because I think he was up against Moyes, so they didn't really need him. But, you know, 104, 149, the 124, 113, 118, 146, 141, 154, and then I think in the final was about a 160. So um, when he's really started to hit his straps, um, he was on fire. So, you know, this is his the second year um, managing the ruck himself. Um, so, yeah, you could definitely go worse than have Marshall. And yeah, there is definitely a world where Marshall can compete with English as the top ruck and you could get him for about 90k cheaper. So um, I kind of don't mind that idea of going there. Both him and English um, share the same buy. Um, so, yeah, I feel like you probably want one or the other. But, um, yeah, if to sort of save the money, I, I don't mind that. But yeah, if I can kind of find the money and get up to English, I don't mind that one either. So they're the two I like more than anyone. Cherry's not too bad. He's just plodding along doing his thing. But I feel like it's just, you know, yeah, okay, you're getting one extra week because of the buy, but I'm probably not wasting the trade for that. The other one people are messaging me about is about Lloyd Meek. Now, I believe Reeves had a really good game you know, last up in the um, VFL. So... Um, you know, they did obviously start the season with Reeves, but the last couple of weeks, 88 and 130 from Meek. As a sole rookie, he's always done very well, even when he was at Freo and Darcy um, was missing. You know, he put up some really good scores there. But, you know, they have um, in games decided to share both of them in the ruck. And you only have to look at his form from last year when they do go that option and some of the scores that go up. So, um, you know, scores of 40, 32, 46, you know, 22, when when there's, you know, sharing rucks um, in there and he's as the sub, when he's, you know, the sole ruck, 110, 112, 108, 104. So he could potentially be the Briggs of this year um, at that discount price if the Hawthorne lock him in as that number one ruck. Um, could average, you know, about 100, if not more. 
and you're getting him at a discount. Um, I feel like if he was, oh, if he even was 50k cheaper, I'd be so much more keen on that. Now, a break even of minus 14, if he was to go well against the, um, you know, either Wits or Moyes or whoever's playing for the Suns this week, which most likely to be Wits. Um, you know, they've got him projected 61, but if he's playing a Sol Ruck, he's going 100. So, you know, he's looking at going up about 50-odd K this week. Um, that break even would be a lot less then. And, you know, in a couple of weeks, he could probably make sort of 80, 90 K, um, you know, get to 450, 460, and, and then you're already flying. And then if, for whatever reason, there was a change, then, you know, it's at least he's bridged some of the gap. And I've heard a few people saying, you know, it is 500 down to, you know, 357 so it's exactly 150k that you're banking right now and there's a bit to do with that 150k so um it is a, a bit of food for thought for me i probably prefer the safety of going marshall if i'm trading grundy i'm not 100 percent keen yet if maybe grundy's the move to trade out but i feel like just um yeah as much as he's doing pretty well um yeah there's uh, there is a little bit of concern there. Um, the annoying thing is, is Jackson plays, um, you know, earlier earlier in than what um, um, Meek does. So yeah, you kind of got to make a little bit of a decision on that, depending on what you are choosing to do. Um, I guess there is a world that you could potentially put Meek in there um, if you wanted to, and actually keep Grundy, um, and then you know because uh, West Coast with uh, aren't playing to the last game, so. Um, potentially I could that extra ca cash that I've got um, where is it there 130k and it is something that I'm maybe it's a left field move 135k there I could actually put it on say Tom Berry Tom Berry um, becomes meek Jackson comes into my forward line and then with Grundy there I could actually just loophole meek for the next couple of weeks and use him as a bit of a cash cow so um, yeah, definitely something, a bit of food for thought. I've also had a little bit of thought about, you know, I did miss out on Sharp last week, could potentially get Sharp in um, for Berry um, by boosting. I'm trying to avoid using a third boost so early in the season, but talking to other, a couple other content creators, they are considering the same thing. Um, you know, and some people are looking at trying to get Martin in, Hayden Young, I know quite a few people traded him out too. Um, so Martin and Young started at 28%, now down to 16%. Obviously, Martin's couple last couple of weeks have been through the roof. Bulldogs, you know, tend to uh, let defenders score really well against them. So we could potentially see similar for Martin. Um, Hayden Young, you know, back in that mid, well, staying in that midfield up against the Carlton midfield who played really well, got a lot of tackles. So um, both of them are options. I don't know if I want both of them because um, as I was saying, the defender options earlier. So um, there is a little bit of food for thought yet, just depending on kind of how teams are named, what I want to do with my second trade and potentially that third trade. Um, but I haven't you know, committed that. That's probably the only one I'm looking at at the moment is how's the close league. And we'll see sort of as we get to probably, I won't make any trade before Thursday, but maybe when it's Friday q and A. I'll make a bigger decision around that when teams are named. It's obviously always easier with teams are named. So that's what I'm going with at the moment. And we'll just kind of see how the rest plays out. Um, you know, Barry, yeah, it's uh, it's probably disappointing. But in a way, I can nearly live with turning him to Sharp. He's already, he made 67K. Yeah, it wasn't the best, but um, because I did that trade, it did allow me to get Flanders in. Um, you know, he does have a break even of 67, which, yeah, he's got most scores under, but he did get that 104 against a very poor Adelaide team. Hawthorne, West Coast, North Melbourne, the Horizon, there's potential where he could reset himself with a big score. Um, but if I kind of look at him to Jeremy Sharp, it's not, they're not that far different. They're uh, 25 um, points different, uh, $25,000 um, different, I should say. Um, and Jeremy Sharp having that massive game of 126 this week, uh, yeah, de that will be in his cycle for a, a couple of weeks, but it's also the fact that, that the Fremantle draw coming up. So I, I'm always very um, fixture conscious. And um, where's Jeremy Sharp here? So 255, 25K. The thing is, yes, I've made, missed technically 130K, but the fact that I've got Barry in there, um, I pretty well just missed what Sharp made last week. So I'm probably 60K out compared to everyone else, which, you know, yeah, you can make, make that up in different areas. Um, but yeah, they've got him projected 68, 65 the next two weeks, which would see um, Sharp make uh, 90K. 
Um, but the fact that that second game is against the West Coast, Optus Stadium, and he also has two back-to-back -back games at Optus Stadium. Um, the wide wings there does keep his space really well, um, and you know, very fit player, and then has the tag. So, um, you know, I think those projections aren't too bad, but I feel like he could spike in one of these games. Was 68, 65, 82, and 67. Um, so that's making him 100k and getting him to 360. But if he was to spike another massive game, like he's gone 115 before against the Dogs, um, that could easily jump even higher and he could find himself closer to 400k in that sort of round 8, 9. And I was talking before about, say, Clayton Oliver getting down to 500k. Um, you know, they might only be a 100k difference. Um, so, yeah, very good if you're an owner. 40% own him, so um, he is somebody that I could potentially do. And um, that hasn't, uh, that will be something I'll be thinking long and hard leading into um, the, the sort of the lockout of the rounds because um, Sharp there, you know, I could very easily just move five back to his F5 spot um, and then put uh, Sharp in that midfield um, and then still even have the money to get Grund Grundy up to Marshall if I want to do the boost. So I feel like the team, and, and let's just do that so people can see at home what that could potentially look like. As I said, I haven't completely confirmed with this as it is, but... Um, I know I can do this if I decide to boost. So where are you, Marshall? Rowan Marshall would come in there. And then the final trade would be, um, get out of my team, uh, Mr. Berry. Let's put Fife uh, forward and let's get in Sharp. And let's just see what that could potentially looks like for my team. So it's something like, yeah, I feel like um, just because of the cash gen, how Sharp's going, yeah, it's just annoying that I didn't start him, but yeah, it's something I can look at. I have thought about trading Jackson, I know that's very popular, the 600k, yes, his break even of 152, he is going to lose money, um, most likely, unless he was just have a freak match, but I don't, I don't think that's likely. There's a little bit of thought, I want to see what happens with Darcy's selection, but in saying that, um, Jackson, uh, yeah, is still one of the best forward options. There's not many forward options going on um, at the moment. So I've got no problem if people want to trade him. Um, but he is playing against um, West Coast the following week, and he does have the dogs coming up. Um, we, we did go through that Fremantle draw so, uh, before. So there is a chance that, especially against West Coast, you know, Sean Darcy could get subbed early in that game if they are, are winning comfortably, just depending on how how he is on his return, um, which would mean Jackson comes in. Jackson also playing forward. Um, you know, there's no reason why he couldn't actually have a massive game up against um, the West Coast defenders because, you know, he's probably going to get the third best defender um, up there. And we know how, you know, mobile he is about getting up the ground. So definitely, um, you know, somebody that you could consider um, uh, keeping if you want to. Like at worst, he probably, you know, he might drop 50k, which would just get back down to his starting price anyway. Um, I wasn't really picking Jackson to as a money maker, but more of a points. Like he's done the job there. He's averaged 120. Um, you know, so yeah, there is a little bit of food for thought for, for thought there. Um, yeah, you know, it's even Richmond round eight, so it's not a bad draw that they have. So he could still definitely go sort of, you know, 80s. Like in the past, he has had some, um, you know, ha poor scores just as a forward. Um, and that's something that you've got to be mindful of as well. Um, you know, there's a 60, you know, 57, 60, 60 there. So, yeah, he could potentially drop significant cash. So maybe Jackson is the move out. but uh, And that's why I'm, I'm keen to just kind of wait until teams um, because he could become any player I really want in there. Um, and I know some people, as I said, are looking at it in English, but let's just say I do those trades that I was looking at before. Livingston would go back there. Uh, Jackson comes in, and then I've got the ability to kind of loophole, um, you know, Cadman and uh, who, who plays first. Cadman plays first, so I could definitely put the Cadman emergency if it goes well. Heaney comes on field for, say, a Darcy or a, or a Buku Kamas. Um, you know, Sharp comes in in there. I can still loophole like a Wilson or a Clark around for like a McKercher. And then to the back line, um, and so I day cost, so I'm still playing 21 on on field, but three of those scores will will drop out. So there is some thought about doing that, and, and I kind of don't mind the setup there because I think long term, um, yeah, it, it keeps that cash gen going. Yeah, it's probably burnt an extra trade here and there that I didn't want to do, but uh, yeah, so be it. There's going to be moments through that 
through like that throughout the season. Um, I think Gorn is the obvious vice captain this week. As I said the other day, 60% of the top 1% had him vice captain. The 129 was a fine score. It was only the problem was if, um, you know, people who didn't have him um, had the ability to get Heaney. And yeah, we got an extra 36 points there, but so be it. Um, you know, the Bulldogs are a good shout against the um, Bombers. I know MJ was saying Nick Martin's not a bad shout either against the Bulldogs. Um, you kind of want guys with high ceilings who can go go off. Um, I don't mind Tom Green as a solid captain option. Zach Butters again. Yeah, you know, these guys are just churning out um, points for fun at the moment. But um, yeah, I'm pretty confident that most people this week will have gone. Just the fact that he, you know, he's just on fire and um, you know, back home, big game against the Lions. Uh, yeah, I could see him just continuing on what or what he's been doing. So. Um, yeah, I kind of like that at the moment, but I'll be back on Friday to give you an update of how we went and then answering those last minute kind of questions. But just make sure you have the um, Melbourne Brisbane situation sorted, which is definitely the house you need to make that trade if you are going to do it by then. All right, guys, hopefully you have a great week and we'll talk soon. Bye.